Anybody who tells you there's only one way to set up a tip up, or any fishing strategy for that matter, they're either full of themselves or they don't know what they're talking about. Let me be honest. I mean, I've got my ways. Well, you know what? Look at that. There's my first flag of the day. So, good time to start. I'm gonna grab my minnows here. So when I get over there, if I need another one, I can set up right away. This is kind of fun to get the video going. Just got my tip ups all set. I'm gonna show you how I do it. And we got a flag. So, what I'm looking for right now is I'm walking up to it. I'm looking to see if it's going to be spinning. And it doesn't look like it's spinning right now. If that top part right in the middle was spinning, that would tell me a fish has got it and is swimming away with it. That doesn't mean that a fish doesn't have it, especially a pike. Pike are notorious. We're taking the bait and then moving 10 feet and then eat chewing on it and then swimming away. But this is the part that I need to see spinning. And it doesn't appear that anything's spinning. But to be certain of it, I'm gonna pull it up nice and slow. I'm gonna feel for, oh, there is something, there's definitely something there. Isn't that interesting? Wow. Maybe it's just fit the bait there. Well, felt like there was a little pressure on there, but let me show you. See, I got a nice worm hook. So I'll use a steel leader because I'm mostly going after pike. Although I've caught catfish with this, I've got largemouth bass, smallmouth bass, even what do you call them big other things? Dogfish. So I'm gonna set him back up and I want him to be about two feet off the bottom. And I used my Vexilar when I came here. I know this is about seven foot deep. So I'm putting about five feet of line out there. And I also know there are some weeds down there, which is definitely what I'd always encourage is look for weeds. Fish are gonna be very weed oriented this time of year. They're under the ice. And I'm gonna try to get them back down there. If you're fishing deeper, by all means, put a weight, quarter ounce weight or something like that. Maybe a three eighths or even a sixteenth, I guess. Uh, maybe two feet above the, the actual minnow and it'll keep that down. But I don't typically do that unless I'm at least eight feet deep usually 10 so here's all set when that fish takes off with my bait yep it's gonna be just like that i'm gonna set my tip up off just like that and i know there's a fish on at least at least i thought there was that time it's not uncommon though to put a big middle on there big pike middle that it can trip it itself we got another flag there it is once again i don't see anything spinning few things to fish and get my heart pumping like a flag. Big old fat bass sitting on a smallmouth bass sitting on a bed maybe. There it goes. See it? See it spinning? See it spinning? Yep, that's what it looks like. When a fish has your bait. That's what it looks like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick it up slowly and I want to feel which way it is. That fish is running that way, I want to yank this way. It's running that way, this way, so forth. Usually, there's not a big rush to get it up. Don't feel the pressure. There it goes. I know it's there. So... And he's on. Yeah, it feels okay. Whatever it might be. Come on, baby. Be a big sucker. I don't think it's very big, but it could be a bass. I just can't wait to see what it is. What are you? What are you? Come on. Show your bad self. Keep pressure on there. It's just like fishing with a rod and reel. You need to keep pressure on there. Don't want to give him anything. Make it loose for him to get. Oh, it's a pike. It's a big one. It's a pretty big pike. See, now my fingertips are the drag on my rod. It's a drag, unlike what's normally on my fishing reel. Yeah, look at that beast. Look at that guy. Oh, yeah. Come here. Come here. Not a bad fish, huh? How about that for the hunter and fish, huh? That's the first fish of the day. Nice and fat. Well, he got that thing pretty far down his throat, which is why I have why I have a uh, steel leader. And uh, an important piece of equipment, always bring fishing, really any time fishing, especially when you fish a bike. It flyers. And back he goes. Hey. The links to my social media are down below in the description and I need some more friends, especially on Instagram and Facebook. Look me up, give me a follow, we can be friends, we can chit chat back and forth, we can message each other. It'll be good times. Just keep it about fishing. Keep it about fishing. I know I'm a hot, attractive man. I know that. I know that. But I'm already a happily married man.
So what is the best weather for ice fishing? I tell you, I don't know. I mean, everything, uh, you, you think you get it figured out one time and then it's different the next time. So sometimes I see it here where the sun comes out and all of a sudden you get bit. It doesn't matter if you're going after pike and bass or if you're going after panfish or walleye. And then other times it's a complete opposite. You want overcast, overcast days are better. Windy days, nasty weather, and you know, it's just very difficult to predict. I don't know, what do you think? What do you think? Put it down below. Let me see hear what you think. You know, a lot of fishing is thought of as just sitting around waiting for the flags to go up. And, and there's some truth to that. But I am going to constantly check on my tip to make sure the bait is alive. I want, I do want it moving around. And I'm going to make sure it hasn't gotten stuck in the weeds on the bottom. I try to put it one, my bait, one to two feet above the weeds. So I get a lot of exercise when I'm fishing tip ups by moving around. I, I try to stay close. One, two, three. That's my legal limit because I'm by myself today. But I'm going to check on those things constantly throughout the day. Well, you see my cheap setup with the tip up, but what about the days like today that's a high of 10 degrees and your holes are constantly freezing over? Well, Darren of Killer H2O Tackle sells these thermal tip ups, and we well, may see it frozen all day long. Now, this has been sitting here how many hours? Six? Five, six, yeah. Well, let's see how frozen that water is, or that ice is under it, or frozen water is, whatever. You know what I mean. Look. Not at all. Yeah. yeah. And I think it's a high of 10 degrees right now. We set this thing up about five hours ago. So, the thermal tip up here. Darren, yep. there, there's a lot of advantages to it compared to the old traditional cheap ones. A couple different things it does. It keeps your hole free of debris, snow if it's blowing. Obviously, it insulates with this insulation underneath so that the hole doesn't freeze like you saw there. It also doesn't allow light down the hole. Sometimes I think that could go either way. Uh, the light could theoretically attract fish, but it also could alert them to something's weird down there. So that's that's the uh, the reasons behind why I use them. I use them almost exclusively. I do have some older wood ones that I get out once in a while, but if it's anywhere near below freezing, um, these just make so much easier of not having to go around and check your tip ups all day long. Now you guys showed me one tip that you shared earlier, which was putting the ice or the snow on top of your flat. Oh, all right. Can you show that? that? Yep, I can do that. It costs nothing, but it's genius. Because sometimes so, those say you've go got off. Let's say you've got a windy day, or you've got a day that... Um, maybe you got a big minnow down there. Maybe you got there. a big minnow down there, right? And you just can't get that, that little thing to stop. I, I'm trying to make it not stop right now. But let's just say we couldn't get that to stop. If I take this piece of ice, and I just set that against that... That'll hold that from the wind blowing it, and a fish very easily can move that out of the way. But it won't let the wind blow the, the flag up. So here you get frustrated with false tip, false flags. Boom, what a tip. You can show me how you set up that bait there, or your bait, because yep. you got a weight, you got. So I got this particular tip up's got an attractor blade on it. Um, and a bead, I see. Yep, I don't always use those. But I just got back from a trip to Minnesota, Wisconsin, and you have to have something on your tip-up rig that makes it a lure. So I put a spinner blade on mine, and that makes it a lure, which makes it legal in Minnesota and Wisconsin to use. Um, and this is just down to a single treble hook. We didn't have giant bait today. We weren't real sure on this lake what we were going to get into, so we set some big baits, some little baits. This happens to be a smaller golden shiner and a smaller treble hook. But that shiner wiggling down there will make that blade skip around and maybe that'll attract a fish in to at least give it a look. And when it comes to shiners versus Shiner, suckers, you, you pointed that, some out here. That's one of the most common questions that I ever get here. See what he's doing? At he's the, putting uh, the bait back away. He's not dumping live bait back in the lake. Live bait in the lake, that's correct. Um, suckers and shiners, I get asked that almost every time somebody doesn't really know the first time they're tip up fishing or whatever whether i'm fishing with them or whether i'm getting bait for them at the shop it's a very common question and i say it really depends on the lake and it depends on the species of fish and the size of fish that you're targeting if you just want to get a lot of flags and you've got a lake with a lot of pike in it my suggestion is use your golden shiners or a smaller sucker if i'm trying to catch large pike or if i really don't care if i get a lot of flags um, a more quality fish oftentimes will be a, a larger sucker, but they're oftentimes harder to get. I like the suckers because they got that white belly on them. And I almost always have my tip up set up higher than I think the fish are. 
so that they can key in on that white belly. Now, last question for you, we're talking depth real quick. Well, I think we're sitting by 17 foot of water here right now, so how much yep. line do you let out? You got that weight on there. How heavy is the weight? And how much line do you let out? Um, I like to use those rubber core sinkers and I like to use them in about a half ounce. Um, it, it could be bigger if I had a bigger minnow, but that's a good size. It keeps it down there, keeps that minnow from being able to run around at will. Um, as far as setting a tip up goes, if you're pike fishing with them, pike feed up. They don't, almost never do they feed down unless they're eating dead bait off the bottom, which I've caught them that way too. But generally speaking, if I'm using a live minnow, I want to be halfway down the water column, maybe a little bit farther than that. Um, the fish have a much better chance of seeing that bait above them moving around than below them. Well, now you got it. How do you tip up fish? And the biggest thing I tell you about tip up fishing, you know what, you cannot catch a single fish sitting on the couch. Get yourself a tip up, get out on the ice, drill some holes, burn some calories, and enjoy yourself a big, jimongous fish.